my brothers and my uh, LTAGA, LTAG um, audience, I just want to say welcome to everyone. Thank you, Sean. Hello. Good. It's good to see everyone. Today is Mother's Day in Australia, so I hope that each and every one of us has made um, our mothers feel special, and then obviously our, our wife mothers, right, Hyper? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and um, and, and um, so, yeah, so happy Mother's Day to those mothers who may be listening <clears throat> or watching this, uh, um, this program. Um, as usual, uh, our, this is our third week with our new, um, our new direction, which is difficult Bible verses. Uh, the last two weeks have been really good. Uh, Jesus in the Old Testament by James, much, much conversation and dialogue and, and even disagreement. Um, and I, I hope that it has challenged not only this platform, but um, everyone who may be listening to uh, go ahead and study it deeper. Study it deeper for yourself. Study some of the topics. Uh, I mean, some of the Bible verses, um, which will help you understand the topic a little bit more. And obviously be, uh, be, be uh, forthcoming in your prayer before you enter in God's word. Um, the other thing to remember is that even though we've had a lot of discussion and even a lot of disagreement, is that we still uh, espouse the, uh, the, the verses that Paul wrote in Romans 14, 5, which is that every, let every man or let every person be convinced according to their own dictates and their own conscience. And um, so we are, we will move forward with that in mind. And also, if you want to join us, if you have any questions, you want to add a comment, please feel free to reach out to us or, con or contact us at let's talk about God three at gmail.com. And you can reach us at um, our Facebook page, which is let's talk about God, or you can um, watch us on our YouTube channel, which is let's talk about God. Um, so with that being said, I'm ready to get into some more difficult verses and have some uh, good conversation over God's word and break bread a little bit as they say. But before we do that, we need to have prayer. So Rod, would you pray for us, please? Sure. <clears throat> um, gracious Father in heaven, thank you for the opportunity to be here and discuss your word so we can learn more about you. Thank we you. ask that your spirit join us today and enlighten and open our minds to understand the subject that we discussed today. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thanks, Thanks for the prayer, Rod. Um, we always need the Spirit to guide us and lead us into all truth. And thanks for the welcome, Sean. Uh, oh, you're welcome. And welcome, everybody. I hope we enjoy the talk today. Um, we'll just go step by step. Um, I'm not going to preach too much. I'm just going to read verses and we're going to talk about it. But there's a few things I want to share. And it's so important, you know, if you look at, like Sean says, the new directions, difficult verses. Hyper, can I interrupt you for a second? I forgot to introduce the topic. Yes. I apologize for our listeners. The topic is, why was a sacrifice needed? Yes. And now I will leave it to you, Hyper. I apologize to our viewers and I apologize to you, Hyper. No, all good, Sean. All good, all good. Yeah, and that's where, where, where I got to this point, you know. Um, you know, when I started to understand the gospel uh, in a different way, a better way, um, this was a huge question for me at one time. Why all sacrifices was needed? Why was sacrifices needed? If God loves us um, and, and we need to just forgive him, why was the sacrifices needed? It was a very difficult question for me to answer because for God to to just take a life of an animal for something else in place of something else. And in the language that, 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 uh, that, it, that was used in the Bible, and I didn't understand it too clearly. And that's why I put this together. And I think a lot of people can't bring the two together. Mm. The gospel, because it's important to understand the gospel correctly, to understand what the sacrifice of God meant for us. If you understand it the wrong way, you will take the sacrifice the wrong way. You will take atonement the wrong way. You will take all those words in such a wrong context. But if you read and study the Bible and also go into some of the definitions of some of these um, words, you find that, um, you find that 
there's actually something else being, the, the story is actually changing in your mind. And that's what happened to me. And that's why I put this together. And, um, and why were sacrifices or why a sacrifice was needed to be saved? Um, is it really a sacrifice of animals that we are saved? Is it the blood of Jesus, the blood, you know? Is it the blood of Jesus that saves us? What is it? What, what, what was actually the need for this? And when we go to the beginning, I want us to start in the beginning so that we can understand. Um, um, before Adam and Eve sinned, right? Mm. God said to Adam and Eve in Genesis 2, verse 17, but from this tree of knowledge and good and evil, you shall not eat. For in that day, you eat from it. You shall surely die. Mm. That's a pronunciation, but it's also a, a reality of what life was made, how life was designed. It's almost telling our children, if you stand on top of a 10-story building and you jump, you will die. You will die. So if we go to the point where Adam and Eve did eat of the fruit, did they die? Like God said. No, they didn't. And the Bible clearly says, from that day on, you shall die. So what is the Bible trying to say? Why didn't they die at the point they ate of the fruit? Because the fruit wasn't the thing that killed them. That, that's killing them. It's actually the lies that was taken in about Satan. But to understand that, you need to read the Bible. Because I don't want to go into that so much. I want us to go into the sacrifice. So Jesus comes, or God comes and speaks to, the, to, to, to Adam and Eve. You shall surely get, die. So my first verse that I would like to, or the first story I would like to say, um, I'm just trying to find it. Where God actually covered them. I think I didn't put it in the right order. So the verse that I'm talking about is when God came to them, they covered themselves with leaves. And God went away and it said he, he made them um, coverings of skin. It doesn't say what animal, it just says covering of skin. And so he covered them. So some people believe, I don't know, that God could have created skin, but it just doesn't really add up if you think about it. Um, because skin comes from an animal and, um, and it says an animal skin. So, so some people agree that God made the first sacrifice for Adam and Eve. So if I want to first start off with a question, just maybe if you can answer in short, what I've read now, and I can read you so many other verses where it says the wages of sin is death, you know. Um, then when last is, uh, this is James 1 verse 15. Then when last is conceived, it gives birth to sin. And when sin is accomplished, it brings forth death. So we see this part of death and we see that, that Adam and Eve sin and they didn't die. And God goes and he slaughters an animal. So what do you think about that story? What do you think about it? In, in what capacity? Like? In, 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 in the capacity of in, in God's character. Why, why was it needed at that time that an animal? Could God have covered them with something else? You yeah. know, what, was there something else that they could be covered with? Or why did God use the skin of the animals? Why, well, why was it? Well, we know originally they were covered with the light yes. from God, which is God's character. We do understand that. But, but when they sinned, they lost that. Yep. And they felt the shame of their, their nakedness. And that could maybe be also shit, uh, portrayed as their guilt. And, um, and the first sacrifice was made 
which I guess typified the lamb of God with that, which would come and God, God kind of spoke to them where they were. So you gotta, I, I guess our, what I'm trying to say is that we got to understand that sin is something that produces death. We got that and get that from James chapter one, things like verse seven, 15 through 17 in there. And because of that sin, there was going to, we were going to die. Yeah. And, and death is not something that God purposed. It wasn't, it wasn't in his creation. It was a, it was a, it was a after aftermath of, of rebellion by Adam and Eve. And God met them with a life that was sacrificed to under so that they could better understand the penalty of what they had done and that sacrifice represented christ who is our um our advocate as we we've discussed uh before on this show um he was he was the the um the lamb that was slain for an act that they did he was the substitute he was their surety and when um when um god did that he was he was letting him know a couple of things that when he said they will surely die, that death has come upon humanity. And he was trying to let them know that he was going to provide the lamb for them. He was going to provide the sacrifice for them. And obviously we know that that sacrifice uh, was, was Christ. So I think God was trying to say a few things um, by that sacrifice and, and, and why it was needed. And the other thing is lambs are not like they used to be. Like lambs used to be the family pet, you know? Yep. And, and, and you would bring that, that lamb up from, you know, a baby and he would be around your family. And it was really hard to take the life of a lamb because especially when you know the lamb was innocent. Yep. So, so those words should be conjuring up a thought about the, the innocent lamb of God that was slain, which is Christ. That, that that lamb is innocent and yet it took it took the penalty uh for sin which we should have uh endured or or had to um to suffer so i mean in a nutshell i think that god was just trying to help them to see and and, and help them to understand that that um mm. that a life had to be i guess sacrificed for something that they had done and the only life that could could suffice that would would have been um jesus christ you've probably covered every verse we're going to cover but we're going to widen this thought that you've explained there sean you, you explained it very well otherwise i also want to ask so so um was the so you you know i don't hear you speak about the substitute you know um sure before uh, before you, you just go the next step, I try to let the Bible answer your question. Yep. Uh, according to Paul, before I answer your question, I would like to read three verses, yep. which Paul written himself in the book of Hebrews chapter 10, yep. verse 1, you can go to verse 11 or 10, yep. Yep. but uh, I'll just read three verses, and then on these three verses, you will get your answer. Paul said the law is only a shadow of the good things that are coming, not the reality themselves. For this reason, it can never, by the same sacrifice repeated and endlessly year after year, make perfect those who draw near to worship. Verse 2 said, otherwise, would they not have stopped being offered? For the worshiper would have been clear, cleansed once for all and would no longer have felt guilty for their sin. Now, that is your answer. But those sacrifices are, are an annual reminder of sin. Yes. And each time you do a sacrificial system, you, that is remind you of your sin. It's only a reminder. The sacrificial system will not save anybody. It just reminds you of your sin. That's what Paul said. Mm. 
So, so where does the substitute come in, the word substitute or um, a, a atonement? Okay, let's, let me read another verse and you can add some more if you want. Do you want to say something, Rod, on that story of, of, of Jesus meeting them? And then we go to the next one. Okay, we go to the next one. Abram, um, um, Abram's story. I just want to see. So why didn't I? So we all know the story of Abram where Abram sacrificed his son, right? So sometime later, God tested Abram. He said to him, Abram, here am I, he replied. Then God said, take your son, your only son, whom you love, Isaac, and go to a region of Moriah. Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on a mountain. I will show you. Early the next morning, he got up and loaded his donkey. He took with him two of his servants and his son Isaac. When he had cut enough wood for the burnt offering, he set out for the place God had told him about. On the third day, Abram looked up and saw the place in the distance. He said to his servants, stay here with the donkey. And the donkey Stay here with the donkey while I and the boy go over there. He will worship you. He will worship and then we will come back to you. Abram took the wood for the burnt offering and placed it on the son Isaac. And he himself carried fire and a knife as the two of them went on together. Isaac spoke up and said to his father, Father Abram, Father? Yes, my son, Abram replied. The fire and the wood is here, Isaac said. But where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abram answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. And the two of them went on together. When they reached the place God had told him about, told him about, Abram built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. He bound, the son, he bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then he reached out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called out to him from heaven, Abram, Abram. Yeah, I am, he replied. Do not lay a hand on the boy, he said. Do not do anything to him. No, now I know that you fear God because you have not withheld from me your son, your only son. Abram looked up, and there in a thicket he saw the ram caught by its thorns. He went over and took the ram and sacrificed it as burnt offering instead of his son. So Abram call, called that place, the Lord will provide. And to this day it is said, on the mountain of the Lord it will be provided. So if you look at that verse, what, what, what do you see? What do you see in that story of sacrifice? God no, coming to Abram. Saying... That's, a, that's a very hard verse to say that God <laughs> asked Abram to kill his son or, or, or sacrifice his son. One thing, is, one thing is bother me. Why God did not call Adam to sacrifice his son instead of Abram? The point is, we have to know why God asked Abraham personally. Exactly. And I read one book called Desire of Ages, page 468, paragraph four to 469, right? He said here, listen to that, I'm, I, it's, not, it's not very long. He said, Abraham had greatly desired to see the promised savior. Greatly desired to see the promised savior. Yeah. He offer up the most earnest prayer that before his death, he might be behold the Messiah. And you know another priest who, who did the same thing? Simeon. Simeon wanted to see Jesus. He said, 
I want to see Jesus before I die. And he did. Yeah, yeah. At the like a baby. He was an high priest, right? Yeah. Now, and and he saw, and, and sorry, and he saw Christ, a supernatural light was given him, and he acknowledged Christ's divine character. He saw his day and was glad. You remember John 8, verses 56? Yeah, 56. He saw. Yes, yeah, 56. He saw his day and was glad. Wow. He was given a view of the divine sacrifice for sin. Of this sacrifice, he had an illustration in his own experience. He commands, he commands, is the command came to him. Take now thy son, Thy only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and offer him for a burnt offering. Genesis chapter 22, verse 2. Upon the, now, I just read uh, page four, 469. Upon the altar of sacrifice, he laid the son of promise, the son in whom his hope was centered. Oh. Then he, uh, then as he waited beside the altar with knife, he prays to obey God. He heard a voice from heaven saying, "Lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing." Thou hast not white, whitened as thy son, thine only son for me. Genesis 22, verse 12. This terrible ordeal was imposed upon Abraham that he might see the day of Christ and realize the great love of God for mm. the world. Amen. So, so great that the, to raise to raise it from its degradation, he gave his only begotten son to a, to a most shameful death. And, and, then, and then that is, that is the, the last verse. But now, when Jesus Christ was on earth, so I, I will share last week, indeed, and, and I read one, one, uh, one, one translation, he said, um, Jesus Christ said, when your father Abraham, your father Abraham want to see my day and he saw it and he rejoiced. Yes. But the, the, the Jew, the Jew reversed this verse. He said, yes. uh, he, said they... he didn't have even 50 years old. You said, you see our father Abraham. He didn't say, you see uh, our father Abraham. Uh, Jesus Christ said, your father Abraham very glad to see my day. My day. And yes. when they say it, he's talking about the first coming, not the second coming. Yes, that's about what I was trying to coming. say last week. Yes. Not the second coming, about yes. the first week, the first, the first coming. And then Jesus Christ said, before Abraham was born, something like that, not take my word 100%, but if you read the Bible, you will see. Before Abraham was born, I am. Hmm. They didn't. They, they did expect the Messiah to come, but they didn't expect Yahweh will become like a person in front of them. Yes. That's the reason he said, "You make yourself become like God, My and God. He is God. He yeah. is our Creator." <laughs> you know, they want to stone him, and then he just disappear from them. That is wonderful uh, verse. I pray you you choose for today. Genesis chapter 22, verse 2. That is wonderful. I love it. I love it, to be honest with you. Yes. Yeah. James, I like how you said uh, earlier that um, the sacrifice was a reminder of our Amen. sin. I like that. And, and it, it kind of runs in line with um, that death is also a reminder of sin. Yeah. And, and, and I, I just wanted to say, praise the Lord, that Jesus said, he will come and destroy his last enemy, mm. which is death. Amen. And, and that's in uh, uh, 1 Corinthians 15. How we will do that, that, my brother? 1 Corinthians. 
by giving him eternal life. Amen. Amen. <laughs> so, so that's so like James said, these are these are really good questions and verses you picked, the hyper, to help people to understand about why the sacrifices like were the necessary. So, and, so, so, so you we guys can go are, deeper into it, but as I said, that is his sermon, uh, hyper sermon. Yeah. We let you talk because it's very deep. To be honest, yeah, it's with very you. deep. So, 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 so when you when you both give a very good answer. So the first thing Sean says, um, remember you said Sean, it's there for them to to uh, to to know that God is going to provide, to know to uh, to know what death is. So it's it was a teaching method, right? God wanted to teach humanity what sin is. And what is love is. James is speaking about remembering what we have been teached. Remembering what God has teached us on. Right? And that is why when you, when, why I read those verses, sin causes death. And because death entered this humanity, God had to show what sin causes because we would never know the consequences of sin. We would never see the, 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 the extremists of sin. I think for, 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 for Adam to slaughter his first lamb, for Cain, um, and I'm sorry, for Abel to, to slaughter his first lamb and Cain and Seth of them was very hurtful. And Sean brought it out so beautifully that uh, the story that Jesus told the, 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 about the, 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 the shepherd who goes after one and he will leave the 99. Only shepherd knows the shepherd would do that and go and fix the 99. One sheep, one sheep or one, one lamb was so valuable to them. They loved them like their family. They cared about them. And, and it was so important in those days. So, so we can see here, um, we can see here in the story of Abram that um, God wanted to teach something. And what can we see? What did he teach Abram? Abram actually answers it at the end. Did you read the verse at the end? What does three, it say? Uh, Genesis 22? Yeah, Genesis 22, verse 13 and 14. Both, read both of them. We'll read it again because this is the important part. Okay. Uh, I'm reading so, from the so, King James. So some right? people would think the important part is that he wanted to sacrifice his son. That isn't the important part. That is not what Abram learned. See what Abram learned. God was happy for him to, because he was so obedient to, to what God was saying. But God was wanting to teach him something. And this is it. Read. But you said 13 and 14, right? Yeah. Okay. This Sorry, is the quick. answer to, to this, why God, did, why God asked him to do this. This is the answer. Okay. It says, and Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him a ram caught in the thicket by his horns. Um, and Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in, in the stead of his son. Verse 14. And Abraham called the name of the place Jehovah Jireh, which means uh, the, um, that is the Lord will see, as it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord, it shall be seen. So we see God will provide. God will provide. Jehovah Jireh. So, so in those days, when they've learned something or something God has done in their life, they actually put an altar. But when God, when, when Abram named this place or this mountain, the Lord will provide. What did he learn about sacrifices? What, what, what did God teach him about sacrifices? You said it. You said that he will provide the sacrifice. There's nothing we can give to God to satisfy God. Because... We can give our hearts to satisfy, but there's nothing we can do or give to God that will give us salvation. The salvation comes from God. And the gospel, that is why I'm saying, if you misunderstand the gospel, some people think God needed to be satisfied by our sacrifices or by the sacrifice of somebody dying. But it's God himself that provides the, 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 the <laughs> sacrifice. Right. So if you understand it correctly, the meaning is here what Abram learned. He says, hi, God, I don't have to sacrifice anything because you will sacrifice everything for me. I just need to trust and believe in you. Yes, because he want, he want, because as I said, he has a great desire to see 
the Savior. Is that the reason Jesus Christ or God himself want him to go through that to understand what God will do? But the thing is, um, the, the thing is, set an example, because Abraham have a lot of sheep. He have a thousand of sheep, you yes. know? And he could, yes. if he refused God uh, sacrificial uh, lamb who caught in a, in a tistool somewhere, if he refused that, that lamb, what will happen? His son have to die. But he accepts the sacrificial nice. God that is his son live. You know, live. That, is, that is very important. The, you know? the, the other thing I want to add is kind of go back when James said about reminder. The thing is that some, not sometime, uh, all the time, we get comfortable in this life of sin. And when we get comfortable in it, then we don't want to move out of our comfort zone. And that sacrifice was a reminder that sin brings death. You know what I mean? Yeah, and we yeah. have to be reminded of that because we get exactly. comfortable. Death is not something that was supposed to be permanent. It's just as like James was saying, even about the sacrifice, it was just a reminder of the consequences of sin. And that's why he's going to destroy it. Because if not, we would, we would be so comfortable. And imagine if the tree of life was still there, even after Adam fell, what would life be like? We'd be eternally living like we're living today. You know what I mean? And that's not what God had in store for us. So it's just a reminder to say, hey, look, th these are the consequences of your action. It has cost this innocent lamb is, its life, which obviously is Jesus Christ. Uh, uh, in in in, uh, in the physicality of it, and the other thing I wanted to say was that um, that um, in getting and getting um, and comfortable in that, that the 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 thing that I wanted to use as an example is is that I know that we've been through a lot the last two years and a bit with with this global pandemic and things like that. But what you hear a lot of people saying is, I just want to get back to normality. I just want to get back to what's normal. Normal. And the re and the reality is. Honestly, if they haven't seen it, nothing's been normal on this earth for 6,000 years. Amen. It hasn't been normal for 6,000 years. And the pandemic is just a, um, a blip, a blip in, in, in the, this, this lack of normality because there's been a lot of stuff that's been going on that says this is not normal. And, 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 and for us to say we want to get back to it reemphasizes my point is we're comfortable here in our sins. And, 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 and we look at death because we see it so much on the news, you know, and this war that's happening and, 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 and illnesses and health and things that we don't even think much about death like we should. And, and look, I, I'm not trying to disrespect anybody, but what I'm saying is we go, oh, there's been so many thousands of deaths from COVID. And we go, oh, like, unless it's affecting us personally, we don't, we don't sympathize with that family, we don't, we don't, it's almost like we don't care. And what I'm saying is that's because we're comfortable seeing death. We should be, we should be saddened when death comes about for anyone on this planet because that, that is a reminder that we still live in this sin and there's nothing normal. So, so look, I wasn't trying to disrespect anybody who's lost anyone during the COVID. All I was saying is that there's nothing normal about our lives we're living now. There's nothing normal. And that is, that is why when, 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 when sin happened, um, abnormal, ab, uh, the abnormal actually came into the world. And that is why death was entered in that way. Mm -hmm. And God never wanted anybody to die the death of a sinner. He didn't want any person to die the death of a sinner. No person was supposed to die the death of a sinner. And um, it's so important that we understand the story of Abram because it learns us a lot about Abram. Because Abram, remember, he came from a pagan background which believed in the sacrifice of children. And God probably spoke to him about something normal here that people used to do for, 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 for their gods. And, and, and the paganism, and God wanted to show him what type of God he is. He's not a pagan God that needs satisfaction or satisfy. He provides. He's the provider for our salvation. I Rod, think, you want uh, to say anything? Yep. Yeah, just because the story of Abraham has been 
troubling you know many people including myself in the past because yeah. um, at when you first read it you think why why god would ask such a thing you know who would sacrifice a son and second why god would ask that so <clears throat> i've been thinking about it and first we need to understand one thing isaac was never in danger of losing his life mm. full stop first if abraham said no to god simply isaac would not have been sacrificed. And we know that um, by Abraham saying yes, God was not going to uh, allow that to happen anyway. So Isaac was never in danger of losing his life over this. But the troubling thing is thinking, okay, so but why God put such a burden into uh, Abraham to do that? you know mm. and how on earth he said yes <laughs> yeah. you know yeah. if that happened to me i would say okay i'm going insane need to go to a psychiatrist or someone to look at my head because i'm not thinking straight but uh, abraham said yes and so i the way i see it for me to understand is that once Abraham said yes, and God then uh, not allowed for that to happen, what God, I think God has very tough ways sometimes in showing us things so we can understand. Mm. If he maybe show it in a different way, that is more like, you know, um, fairy tale type we wouldn't see it exactly as it is so as you said sin caused death and to see it really really how it is a sacrifice was required so people would see what really causes um wh what sin caused which is death so the way i see it in this story is that by asking that to Abraham is for us, particularly the ones, you know, if you are a parent, is to put yourself in the place of Abraham and think, okay, would I do that? You know, and that's, it, it is so shocking to think about it, so shockingly to think about it, that you really dwell into the story and you think how could that be even required for mm. a a someone and let me finish and the way i see it is for us to understand the sacrifice that jesus was going to make later on so what actually in that story, God was showing us, okay, see what I ask you? I'm not permitting you to do this. Mm. I am going to do this. Yes. Mm -hmm. You get it now? It's yeah. like, see how incredible, uh, unbelievable it is for me to ask you to do that? Well, you don't have to do it. I will do it. Sure. Yeah, that is well. Another beautiful lesson there, Rod. Nice. Yeah. Wow. James, you want to say something? James, but before 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 God asking Abraham to sacrifice his son, in the Bible, God said, "Never sacrifice your ch your children, mm. because don't do like the pagan people do over there. Mm. I don't want that to happen to you." Abraham know very well God said that to him. To every, to every believer who follow, God, who follow God. Now, as I said to, I just read the Bible, uh, Desire of Ages, I explain the reason that God talked to Abraham to sacrifice his son because he want to see the savior and he want to know about the savior. That's the reason 
God allowed him to go through that to make him understand uh, the suffering Jesus Christ have to go through. Now, did God sacrifice Jesus? How we will explain that? And uh, some people might just say, God doesn't want you to sacrifice your son and let me sacrifice my son myself. Did God do that to Jesus? And only way we can understand that, we have to let the Bible talk itself. And Paul explains that in two group, in two place in the Bible. I just try to see if I find, if I find this place and I will share it with you. Paul explains that very clear. And uh, why, why, why God, uh, what, what did happen to Jesus? He didn't, uh, God never sacrificed Jesus Christ. Like some Christian might think about, about God's sacrifice. Look at, um, uh, Paul explains that uh, in two places. Uh, hang on. Uh, yes, he said, Paul, Paul is the only New Testament writer who attempt to try to explain briefly the death of Christ in two locations. And the, one, the first one is uh, Romans chapter 3, verses 25 to 26. He said, God present Christ as a, as a sacrifice of atonement through the shedding of his blood, that is his death to be received by faith. Only by faith we can be saved, right? He did this to demonstrate his righteousness. Why God have to demonstrate his righteousness? He's always right. He's always do the right thing. He's always righteous. Why he have to demonstrate his righteousness? Because we get it wrong. We thought God is our enemy. We thought God is the one who will destroy us. Uh, and then he said, because in his forbearance, he had left the sin committed beforehand and punished. God never punished nobody from Adam and to, until right now. He never punished anyone, even in the present. He never punished anyone. The Bible says that very clearly. Now, that is called that the forbearance, uh, the forbearance uh, sin that is left behind, that is the past. He said committed beforehand, unpunished. He didn't punish anyone, unpunished. Verse 26, he said he did it to demonstrate his righteousness again, to demonstrate his righteousness at the present time, to show you I always do the right thing. I mm. never do the wrong thing, you know? So Amen. as to be just and the one who justified those who are faced in Jesus Christ. That verse is so powerful. Let's read now in, in, in the second place where he explained it about the death of Jesus Christ. Hebrew chapter 10, I start to read verse one. He said, the law is only a shadow of the good things that are coming, not the realities themselves. For this reason, it can never by the same sacrifice repeated endlessly year after year, make perfect those who draw near to worship. Mm. We always feel guilty sometimes when we commit sins, that everybody feels the same way. Otherwise, verse two, otherwise would they not have stopped being offered? For they, for the worshiper would have been cleansed once for all. If that sacrificial we they're doing in the past, if that really uh, will save them from sin, they will they will stop doing that for long times again. If they do understand really, if really they have faith in it, but the lack of faith, we keep doing it, and would no longer have felt guilty for their sin. But those sacrifices are an annual annual reminder right. of sin. Each time you do the sacrificial system, that reminds you of your sin. But until but the rich people especially said, um, now they, they do whatever is bad, 
And then one day they have a lot of money, they bring a lamb, they just buy a lamb and cut a lamb, and then they keep doing it all the time. They never stop, you know? Verse 4, he said, it is impossible for the blood of bulls and goat to take away sin. The Bible explains itself, you know? It's impossible for the blood of sacrificial system to take your sin away. It is impossible. Therefore, when Christ came into the world, he said, Christ said, sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body you prepared for me. That is Jesus himself. God prepared a body for himself. He came into this body to come to this planet Earth to explain to us about the sacrificial system with burn offering and sin offering. He said, and sin offering, you were not pleased. God doesn't want the sacrificial system. He doesn't want that. He knows their heart. He knows they will never change with that. Verse 7, he said, he said, then I said, here I am. It is written about me in the scroll. I have come to do your will, my God. Mm. Jesus Christ come to do the will of God, to encourage us, to show us he is the one who tried to save us. He's not our enemy. The enemy is Satan himself. He revealed us very clear the character of God and also what Satan tried to, try to deceive us. Verse 8 said, first he said, sacrificial, sacrifice and offering, burn offering and sin offering, you did not desire. No, were you pleased with them, though they were offered in accordance with the law. Then he, Christ, said, here I am, I have come to do your will. That means your desire, pleasure, will that God want he want us to keep his commandment because he know if we keep his commandment he will save us he will yeah. you will love you will love God and you will love one another yeah. he set aside the first to establish the second amen and by yeah. that will we have been made holy through the sacrificial through the sacrifice of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Oh. Yeah, mm. but uh, I can I can keep reading uh, uh, to explain to you the book of Desire of Ages, and you can read that another time if you want. But oh, if I have a time a time later on, I can share that with you. Desire of Ages, six hundred and ninety-three, paragraph one. Oh, he will show you something you never see before. Now yeah, you will understand yeah. why the sacrificial system. God never yeah. wanted. Yeah, he yeah. Never and, wanted. And, and 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 that is what what I just wanted to 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 come to to, to an understanding. How do we merge? Uh, I I wanted us to bring Jesus into it, but you just a little bit jumped the gun, there, James. But I want to <laughs> hear from the others. Um, I, I, I just thought, only I, thing I wanted to say. I the only thing I wanted to say was some of what Rod was saying, and I think some of what you were saying earlier too, and then we can go a little bit further. I will not take much time on this. Okay. I just wanted to say that, like you said, the, the culture of that day was pagan and they did offer their sons or as I say, their children um, to, to pagans and idols. And uh, as James said, uh, God never wanted his people to sacrifice their children. And the other thing is, that when God said that to Abraham, it was actually opening Abraham's understanding to like what Rod said, that God would do it. So, so he asked, I, he asked Abraham to offer his only son, mm. his only son. But as you said, he didn't have to do that because God offered his only son. His only son. And we all mentioned it earlier because we're parents. Who would think about, like Rod said, such a horrible and unthinkable concept to offer your child? You know, we would not think of that. But he asked Abraham that as a, um, a way of opening his mind so that he could understand what God would do, which would, like uh, Hyper, you said you want to bring Jesus in, what God would do uh, and his own son, which would be offer him for 
our salvation, our redemption. And, and that's what that's what I think we need to understand because the, the purpose uh, of the deep impression upon his understanding would help him to understand the plan of redemption. Of redemption provider, yes. And he speaks about, James spoke about this time that, that uh, Abram actually saw of his day. It's actually when he wanted to sacrifice his son and then God showed that he is the provider, you know. So, so it's, 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 it's clearly said there. But I just want to bring a little bit. I wanted to bring first the difficult verses, um, two verse, difficult verses in for us to talk about because we're talking about difficult verses to explain these verses. And then I want to speak about one verse about Jesus. And then we can actually say, what does the Lamb of God stand for? So 2 Chronicles 7 verse 3 to 5. When all the children of Israel saw how the fire came down and the glory of the Lord on the temple, they bowed their faces on the ground and on the pavement and worshiped and praised the Lord saying, for he is good, for he is merciful endures forever. His mercy endures forever. Then the king and all the people offered sacrifices before the Lord. King Solomon offered a sacrifice. This is King Solomon's sacrifice of 20,000 bulls and 120,000 sheep. So the king and all the people dedicated the house of God. Then Leviticus 16 verse 21 brings it much closer to what, we were, what James was discussing and Sean was saying now. Then Aaron shall lay both of his hands on the head of the live goat and confess over it and all the iniquities of the sons of Israel and all their transgression in regard to all their sins, he shall lay on them and on the head of the coat and send it away into the wilderness by the hand of the man who stands on it readiness. So he, there's a goat and there's a sheep. That's the escape goat and he shall be led out. And now in verse 1, verse 29, it says, The next day he saw Jesus coming to him and he said, Behold, who's this saying this? We all know him. The Lamb of God, which takes away the sin of the world, which right. is... Uh, John the Baptist, right? John 1 verse 2. Yeah. So my question is, you see those, how do we merge those questions, the sacrifices in the Old Testament and why carry uh, value for the people and, 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 and here Jesus and here uh, John says, behold, um, uh, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. So that is what they also did to the sheep. They used to pray on the sheep and uh, not just the goat, but that's on the day of atonement. But every day they used to pray when they, on, on the sheep before they sin and they would cut the, the throat of them and the blood would flow out. So my question is, how do we bring those two things together? How can we, how can we explain the verses where they sacrifice so many bulls? Um, look, for, for, first of all, I, I guess I want to go back a little bit before we even go forward. And, and looking at Isaiah chapter, um, I wrote it down here just to make sure I got it. Isaiah chapter 11, I mean, chapter 1, verse 11 through 14. And he says that, um, he says that it is, um, he's, I'll just you read verse 11. He says, to what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices unto me. I, I just was thinking this because of what you just read about um, Solomon and how many sacrifices he made, right? Yep. And yep. you're saying, what is, what, is the, what is the purpose of the multitude of your sacrifices unto me? Say it the Lord, I am full. He says, I am full of burnt offerings and rams and of the fat of the beast. I delight not in the blood of bullocks or of lambs or of goats. Yep. He doesn't even yep. want them. He doesn't even want them. I think we covered earlier about why we made the sacrifices as a reminder of our sin, but he doesn't even want them because the blood, and we said it, I don't know if it was James or not, or Hyper or Rod that said it, but we know the blood of lambs and bullocks in them does not save us. So he says he doesn't even want it. So to merge them together, I think, Hyper, to try to answer your question, takes us back to the beginning, like what James said, which is it was just a reminder for the people of their sins so that they will not like God wants us to dislike sin 
and he, it was used in the sacrificial system for us to potentially get a get a a picture, conjure something, a thought in our mind that says, "Hey, man, this is not cool. Um, uh, why do we do this? Uh, let's let's stop sinning, so we don't need to the we don't need to keep uh, 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 sacrificing uh, these bullocks, and and the Lord will come. You know what I mean? I'm I'm just thinking things like that. So he didn't even want it. He didn't even want it. Um, and um, also it says that in Hebrews as well, that he didn't want it. But to answer your question, Hyper, from what I can understand so far from what we went through tonight and what I looked at a little bit earlier in the week is that it's just a reminder. And, um, yeah, but and that's how you bring, it, you bring it together. You, you, you bring it together. You bring it together in the fulfillment of what the sacrificial system was about, which is yeah. Jesus Christ. But you see, Sean, it wasn't just a reminder. It was a, you can't be reminded of something you don't know. It was also a teaching tool. Like Abram was taught, we were trained, we're educated. And it acts as a reminder. We need to keep those two together. Because okay. if you look at all those ceremonies that they had, um, if you look at the sanctuary itself and all those symbols in the sanctuary, those were symbols of the reality. But unless you understand what it means, there's many people who misunderstand it. Right? And they are reminded of the wrong thing. So they, and then they worship paganism. So you can. So it, it was a teaching tool to show us the reality of God, but also a reminder as well. Yeah, uh, like a, I like a, a Christ object, object lesson. Sorry, is that what you're saying? Is that what you're saying, Harper? It was like an object lesson to teach us something. Yes, it was. Yes. It was to teach us something. It wasn't there as as as, as for God to be satisfied. It was there to teach us. And you read the verse. I'm going to read another verse in Micah chapter 6, verse 6 to 8. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow down before the exalted God? The question mark. Micah, shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves, a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams and ten thousands rivers of oil? Shall I offer him my firstborn for my transgressions? Look at the, the mindset of the people in those days. He's asking this. The fruit of my body for the sin of my soul. He has showed, he, he has showed you, you oh man. Man, what is good and what yeah. does the Lord require of you? To act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly before the Lord. Amen. How we will answer this question? Is there something magical about the blood of Jesus Christ. Good question, James. Good question. <laughs> <laughs> some Christian, some Christians say, no, the, the, the blood of uh, the blood of bull or a lamb will, will not save our sin. But the blood of Jesus Christ <laughs> will do it. Yes. <laughs> you know? Yeah. How to answer this question? To see if it's this to what to see if there's something special in the blood of Jesus Christ? Yeah, is there something magical? about the blood of Jesus Christ. Because I don't, believe, some people it. I don't say, believe in magic. Sorry? I don't believe in magic. Because some people believe the blood of the lamb and the blood of the bull is not good to save us. It can't save us. The Bible says that. But God would like to offer his son. The blood, the blood of his son. His life. The blood is the his life. The blood of his son will save us. Uh, do you believe that thing like this? Can, only can I, in only in only in the only in the understanding that the blood is just an a, a word that represents his life. It's his life that saves us. So mm. so can uh, and, and, so I know you got a Bible verse for us, brother. I've got a Bible verse today. <laughs> oh, you do too. Okay, both of you guys. Do. I want to hear them both. <laughs> Leviticus chapter seventeen verse ten says, "Any Israelite or any alien living among them who eats any blood, any blood, I will set my face against him, that person." Who eats blood and will cut him off from the pee from his people? What was that? Mm. Leviticus what? Hyper? Leviticus seventeen verse ten. Now here's the here's the the the, 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 the to the to 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 uh, um, James's question. Here's the answer finally. So he says we mustn't eat blood, right? Mm. And this is where it says, for the life of the creature is in the blood. And he speaks about sacrifice, right? And I and I have given it to you. To make atonement for yourself on the altar. It is the blood that makes atonement for, for one's life. So in the blood is the life of the person. 
So it's the life and death of Jesus Christ. Everything that he has revealed to us, the life, it, the blood represents the life of Jesus Christ. It's not James. magical, James. I've heard it before. I, uh, Sorry, I, I, I respect those people that will listen the desire, to this one day. The says, desire of ages, page 693, paragraph one. He said, back in the Garden of Eden, God said that sins, sin lead to death. Yes. That is Genesis chapter 17, Genesis chapter 2, verse 17. The death of Christ, the death of Christ, the death of Jesus Christ in the garden of the Tsimani, in the garden, oh man, I just lost, in the garden of the Tsimani, that is, um, that is a desire of ages. 693 and paragraph one. And again, on the cross, demonstrate the fact that, the fact, that fact completely and finally. Could we ask for any clear demonstration that death and the subsequent resurrection on the third day prove Inequivocally, that Satan is the one who has lied and misrepresent God at very step at every step of the way. Jesus was the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. You can read that from um, from uh, not when he was here from the world and. Uh, Revelation chapter 13, verse 8, uh, Jeremiah 32, verse 40, Hebrew chapter 13, verse 20 to 21, John 13, verse 34, sins lead to death. That is very clear and simple when we understand why Jesus Christ has to come to die and what death Jesus Christ is talking about. Is he talking about the first death, the second death? Did Jesus Christ die the second death? No. If he did die the second death, he will remain dead. No one dies a second death will come back to life. Whoever they are, dies a second death, you gone completely. That's the reason Jesus Christ come back to life because he didn't die the second death. That is a good point. Jesus Christ said, I got the key of death. He overcame it, yes. And that is my enemy. And that's what I want to destroy. I came here to destroy death. And that's and the second death. He destroyed death is, the second is death. God enemy. Yeah. Now, he's talking about the second death. We all know that yeah. anyway. Yeah, but when we read all those chapters and all those verses, we will understand what is very simple. It's not God said, oh, I'm thirsty of the blood of Jesus Christ, not of the bulk, bulk or the lamb or whatever, you know. No, he wants to explain to us the plan of salvation. Because Jesus Christ did not die only for us human beings on this planet Earth. He died also for the sinless angel in heaven. I yeah. hope all my brothers and my sisters who hear me talking today, if you have a question, you can ask us and we will answer you from the verse in the Bible. Mm -hmm. You know, he not die only for this planet Earth. He died also for the sinless angel. And uh, it's very clear and simple. God wants us to understand he's a God of love and he wants to save all of us and he has no intention to, to punish anybody. That is not, he, he will correct us in a way. If you love him, he will correct us. Like will, how you call that? Like, um, uh, how you call this word? I forget how you call it. Not punish, but to- um, Discipline. Discipline, thank you, my brother. The Holy Spirit put that in your mind. <laughs> yes, he will discipline us. Yes, because he loves us. He yeah. wants us, and discipline us is good for us. Hmm. You know, I, yeah. I, I, I know I've been talking a lot. I want to hear from Rod. I saw Rod yeah. writing some things down and want to see what his thoughts were. Um, you had any? Just, just a comment on um, James mentioning whether the blood of Christ had special magical powers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, coming to think about it, blood in itself 
whether it's Jesus or somebody else's, in itself, it has really no power. Because exactly. And we say, oh, the blood represents life. Yes, as long as it is circulating in the body. <laughs> like it, bro. Because it, my you can have you can you can have a dead person that just died a few minutes ago, and you'll have that person full of blood inside. But that blood will not be circulating because the heart would have stopped. Therefore, it's not blood. the blood, it's the life itself. Mm. You know, when circulating, you, you know that the heart is pumping that life throughout the body. Therefore, there is life. So it's not the blood, to me, I don't think it's the blood in itself, as you know, the blood inside the veins, but the life of Christ. He gave his life. He didn't use his power to save himself. And he gave his life freely. So to me, it's his life, mm. not necessarily to the teach blood us, itself. To teach us the plan of salvation. Yeah. He's a loving God. Amen. Can I just share a last verse that takes us into heaven? Um, and two verses, actually, that takes us into heaven. You can follow me on Hebrews chapter 9, verse 19 to 28. This will be 19 to 28? Yeah, and then we can ah. just say what God is doing for us. And then we'll do Revelation 5 or 6 after that, because we have to first speak. I like to follow each other. Keep so you know, our we'll eye. So we probably Sorry. have to keep it short so we keep our eye on yeah, time now. Yeah, I'm going to read it now. Hebrews 9, verse 19 to 28. And then we'll read Revelation. It's it's on the on the email as well. So you can yeah, yeah. for when Moses had spoken every precept to all the people according to the law, he took the blood of calves and goats with water, scarlet, wool, and hyssop, and sprinkled both the book itself and all the people, saying, This is this is the blood of the covenant which God has commanded you. Then likewise he sprinkled with the blood both the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry, and according to the law. Almost all things are purified with blood. And without shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. Therefore, it was necessary that the copies, listen to this, we were speaking about the Old Testament sacrifice, that the copies of the things in the heavens should be purified with these things, but the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than these. For Christ has not entered the holy place made with hands, it's not cups and, and tables and stuff. It's not made with hands, which are copies of the true, but into heaven itself now to appear in the presence of God for us. Not that he should offer himself often, as do the high priest enter the most holy place every year with blood of another. He then would have had to suffer often <laughs> since the foundation of the world. But now, once at the end of the ages, he has appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. And as it is appointed for men to die once, but after this judgment, so Christ was offered once to bear the sins of many. To those who eagerly seek, wait for him, he will appear a second time apart from sin for salvation. Apart from sin for mm. salvation. And then I just want to read just um, Revelation chapter 5 or 6 says, and I saw between the throne, which it speaks, remember Hebrew speaks about this, this is happening in heaven, and the elders and the lamb standing as if slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are seven spirits sent out in the whole earth. So we know this lamb is Jesus Christ. He stands in the presence of God. So in closing, what does the sacrifice in heaven is doing. And these things are not made with heads, right? What was it? What was the sanctuary all about? You see all the cups and the horns and the blood being rubbed on the horns. And just in closing, what do you think? What, what do you understood under all those principles? Remember, we said it was educating us or training us or teaching us, and it was a reminder. So what was the 
those the tabernacle in uh, the sanctuary in in the old testament telling us about the heavenly sanctuary that god what god is doing for us today and i'm asking a lot of questions i know there's a lot but i'm hoping the spirit can lead you to one point i said it can lead you because i've got a few I, things to share i'm just going to be quick and i'll be brief the the the, the sacrificial system um was a um, set out with all the symbols um, that that represented uh, Jesus Christ and the plan of salvation. That was that was what the 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 sanctuary was from the outer courtyard to the uh, inner court and then to the most holy. I mean to the to the holy and then to the most holy. holy. So, 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 so here you see, you see um, Paul or, or Luke, or I don't know who wrote this, but when they went into heaven, they, they, they clearly see that, that God is standing there, uh, a lamb, and, 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 and he explains what was happening in the Old Testament, the, the sanctuary is happening in heaven. The cleansing of the sanctuary, all those things, all those words. We I know we spoke about the cleansing of. You must bring all those verses in to get an understanding of what Paul is trying to say. What's happening in heaven here? Am I asking a difficult question? Maybe only I uh, I know the answer to the question because yeah, you got me. Okay, it's it's a long one because yeah, okay. if if we stop to think about it, the uh, the the tabernacle that was given uh, to the Israelite in the desert and all that. It's, it's a minute thing, right? When I say minute, it's small. They had transported. And if we think, oh, well, that is in heaven also. And if we think that is exactly the same thing as it was in earth, it's full, it would be foolish of us to think that. Uh, I, I think that was the one uh, for the Israelite, it was like a theater so they could understand the plan of salvation. And the one in heaven, who knows how big it is, and I don't think it's a construction of, you know, uh, fabrics or wood or whatever, it is, must be some living thing. And, and remember that in, in the tabernacle inside, in the curtains, there were... Um, angels right yep yeah yeah so in i would i would tend to think that in heaven they are real angels they are not curtains with you know paintings of angels they're real thing so in 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 here it was like an, an analogy a small analogy of what really is the big thing in in heaven which is a a, a living tabernacle i would say um that is in there so, so, so what you're saying, God takes his life. He takes the life that he lived. Because we say he takes the blood. Remember, the blood gets taken into the sanctuary. Mm. He takes the life. He takes it to heaven. And we know that blood gets rubbed on the horns of each of the Ark of the Covenant. The horns, what does horns represent? Proudness, pride. And it rubs. And those, those horns get smaller. And we know that if you study the sanctuary, you would understand what God is actually trying to do. Jesus is trying to atone to bring us back to God in our hearts and minds. The cleansing of the sanctuary needs to take place. Yes, God has been seen as a God of love, but not clearly, not loudly, not, not like it says in, 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 in Revelation. Be like a loud cry for everybody to see. So what I'm trying to say is, that God is trying to develop a people that will bring this loud cry, the clearest message of, of who God is in the people that he comes to fetch again, which it speaks about, which he comes the second time apart from sin. So he needs to cleanse sin out of us. Now, I'm not, we spoke about perfection. What is perfection? It's a maturity issue we spoke of. And that is actually what God wants us to be mature in our relationship, that we would not be moved. So, so the cleansing of the saying, what God is doing now is preparing for the last days, for the last battle. 
the battle over our hearts and minds. So that is why it's not built by hands. It's God's creation that God is working in. He's working in our hearts and our minds. And like I preached two weeks ago, that what God has developed in the human body or, or, or created or, or the remedy that God has made, he took to heaven and he says, Father, this is what I have done for the human race. Mm. And he shows the Holy Spirit, this is what you can do, Father, if you send him. In the, in the life of James, Hyper, Hyper, Sean, and Rod. This is what you can do. You can replicate the life of Jesus. And that is why Jesus says you can have the righteousness of Jesus Christ in our life. And that is the righteousness. not covering us with, with a cloak so God cannot see us, so the angels cannot see us. It's cha really changing us from the inside out, writing the laws on our hearts and our minds so that we can be taken home. And, and, and that will probably be my closing. I don't know if I, if I was wrong. Did, that, did I hear very well? Is Jesus Christ offer his blood in the altar here in heaven or something like that? No, I, 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 that is why I said he went into heaven with the life. We know the blood, the life that he lived. We, we've just explained what the blood means. Yes. So he went into heaven because this is what Hebrews, if you go and read Hebrews chapter nine, he stands before the, the universe and he uses everything that was done in the Old Testament. That what's happening in the Old Testament is happening in heaven for the day of atonement. And that is why we careful. have the scapegoat, we have the scapegoat. So what he does in heaven, he says, God, this is my life that I've lived, which is the blood, which we, if you symbolize it, it's blood. The symbol is blood. The reality is Jesus taking himself, standing as the lamb slain from the foundation of the earth, the verse that I've read. So he's standing have to be very, his children. And I'm sorry, must I read it again? You have to be very careful because the verse you have been used in um, Revelation chapter five, verse six, and he said very clear here, he said, and I saw between the throne with the four living creature, the four living creature, also we can call that the, the elder. Yeah. And he mentioned that he said here, and the elder, a lamb is standing as, remember this word, as, if he slain. He's not slain there. As if he slain. He was slain on this planet Earth. He was put on the cross. He died here. He resurrected. He went to heaven. Having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirit of God sent out into all the earth. Now, there is a message here for us to learn, and I will share it with you. Now, he said, the Holy Spirit is referred to as the seven spirit of God. You remember we read seven spirit yeah. of God? Now, you can also compare that with uh, Revelation chapter 4, verse 5, and out of the throne precede lightning and thundering and voice and there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne which are the seven spirit of God that means that the spirit of God himself in Revelation chapter 5 verse 6 we mentioned that before we know the number seven is a number applying completeness completeness or perfect completeness in this case it was walking talking about the holy spirit witness to all seven churches on this planet earth all seven churches the seven spirit are also called the seven lamp uh, revelation chapter 4 verse 5 and the seven eyes of the lamb revelation chapter 5 verse 6 we find it now, let me finish this one. Jesus himself is identified by three different titles. The first full, wit the first full witness, second, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler over the king of the earth, Revelation chapter 1, verse 5. This title clearly refers to his death on the cross, his resurrection, and his reign in heaven. That is plain and clear. Maybe it's hard to understand because we're going too fast. 
But uh, if we sit down and, and study it uh, step by step, is a wonderful to, to understand. Yep. So, so James, what I, what I was trying to say, the, it, even as the verse says here, it says it's, it's the, uh, let me just find it. Where is it? As if he's slain. Oh, no, no, wait, wait. Sorry. No, you go Hebrews 9, I think. Hebrews 9. So yeah. if you read it again, this is the blood of, okay, let me read it again so you can understand what I'm trying to say. For when Moses had spoken every precept to all the people according to the law, he took the blood. So it speaks about how the sacrifice took place. Took the blood of goats, calves and goats, and water and wool and hyssop, and sprinkled both the book itself and the people, saying, this is the blood of the covenant which God has commanded you, Right. Then likewise, he sprinkled the blood both on the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry. Ministry. So he sprinkled it all over the work. The, the, the work. And we know, we know that blood represented the life of Jesus Christ. And those are all symbols. And according to the law, and almost all the things are purified with the blood. So with the blood, it's purified. With the life of Jesus, we are purified. And without shedding of the blood, without no remission, resurrection. There is no remission of sin. So God could not expel sin out of our lives without. Therefore, it was necessary that the copies, you see the copies, it, the old things were the copies, the blood. The reality now is that Jesus died like the outer, outer, outer um, court. He died on earth and he went into heaven. The cleansing of the sanctuary, which is, which is speaking to the father and speaking to the spirit to do the work in our lives. And he did it with all seven churches. And if you understand it, like I understand it, maybe I'm wrong. It's the seven churches of the history after Jesus till the end of time. So God is continually working to cleanse the sanctuary, to reveal the truth, like we say, truth and love of God to the people on the earth until mm -hmm. Jesus can come the second time. Hmm. So is it much? Clearer? Yeah, we can't, we cannot confuse the the sanctuary on earth and the sanctuary in heaven. Even now, if we want to talk about the Hebrew chapter nine, ah, oh, we have a lot to go. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. But Steph, you done very good job uh, at uh, praise yeah. the Lord. Yeah. Yes. So, is there any questions to what I explained? Does it make sense? Anybody else? Um, look, it was a lot covered. And I think that um, it gives a lot to, you know, for everyone to think about and think stuff about. like that. Yep. Yeah. And, and to go study and look at it. Stuff. This is this pro this platform is a triggered thought. Yep. You know, and it doesn't mean that someone's going to walk away and be fulfilled like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm correct and stuff. Yeah. It's, no, it's mm. just designed for to trigger thought. And I think everyone understands that. And look, Amen. if you want to look at something deeper, um, then then by all means. Um, but if you understand what was said and presented today, then praise the Lord too. Um, and, that, and that's kind of that's kind of how I see it personally myself. And I think that everyone pretty much agrees the same way. We just we just trying to share what what we understand and and let other people decide what they believe and uh, study, man. Study the word for yourself because no matter who's right on this platform, we we we're not the surety for anyone's salvation. It, it, it is Jesus, and each in salvation is an individual matter. So each of us better study the word themselves. No matter what I say, don't believe me. Go study it for yourself. <laughs> that, yeah, that, that, that's, that's true fact. Hey, that's true yeah. facts. Yeah, yeah, that is the best way, isn't it? Yeah, that's true facts. So, so that's <laughs> that's kind of how I see it. Um, so, Hyper, if you were done, I'll let you conclude. Yeah. Let's bow our heads for prayer, dear Lord. You are always at work in our lives. You've never left us. Um, you've never forsaken us um, and you want to cleanse the sanctuary and we know the sanctuary was contaminated with lies and deceit about your character dear lord about who mm -hmm. you are and 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 not only that what occurred father in in adam and eve or in heaven or wherever satan has spread his lies it also changed us lord it also changed us. God could bring us the truth, but there's something else he also did. He needed to heal the condition of sin. Mm. He needed to heal us as human beings. 
Mm. Because even if Satan gets taken out of the picture now, we are still lost, dear Lord. And we need a savior. Even if Satan gets, and you knew it, even if you put Satan, even if Satan was put to death or died or because of the consequences of what he believed, Father, we know we would be lost because we accept that we are sinful and dying and we need a savior. Mm. And Lord, you came to this world to show us that you would give your life for us. Yes, oh Lord. And you went to heaven to reveal more and to show more in the lives of your people so that the angels would sit and wonder, like you said to your disciples, you think I'm doing a lot? What you will do is so much more. So Father, we know you want us to do so much more if we only trust you. Let the Holy Spirit come into our lives Amen. and cleanse this sanctuary so that we can go home. Amen. In the wonderful name of Jesus, amen. 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 Hey, I know Rotte had to go, but one of the things yeah. I wanted to say was before everyone goes,